Hi guys, uh, Coach Carter here. I'm going to start off by saying if you like these videos and you want updates uh, when I make new ones, please hit the subscribe button on your screen and you'll be the first to know when, uh, when I uh, upload a new video. But today we're going to talk about total body progression exercises. Uh, again, if we were looking at our, our program here, we have three tiers, upper, lower, and total. And then we have three base exercises in each of those tiers. So we're focusing today on our total body tiers, which includes clean, high pull, and front squat. But we're working drills that are going to prepare us to do these three lifts better. So instead of just throwing our young kids in into the clean, throwing our young kids into the high pull, throwing our young kids into the front squat, we're going to do a few exercises to get them prepared for these drills. I, I've really learned um, as I've continued as a strength coach that going a little slower, making sure there's a foundation set before we advance with weight and more complex exercises, not only helps the kid with kids with their form, it, it gets much, much better, but it also helps the kids maximize their growth in the weight room in terms of their strength. So uh, why progressions? Many kids don't begin with proper jumping form and wrist strength, which will limit their ability to properly clean. So we're actually going to get their feet and, and learn how to triple extend in the proper positions before we ever grab a bar. Uh, progressions will help to develop this strength and flexibility. So the cues I have generally regard to jumping, I want their feet to be under their hips. A lot of times the, the feet start too wide and it's, and it's limiting how much power they're going to get. Uh, I want the kids to be, I want them to jump by putting force into the ground. So it's a combination of force into the ground with extension up. I want them to kind of be thinking about both. It's not just lifting my feet up. It's force down, extension up to get that height. Uh, the more force that I put into the ground, the more power I'm going to get upwards. Uh, when regard to jumping, you know, a quick quarter squat to jump is what we're looking for for max explosion. You know, if you saw a basketball player on the court, he's going to do a quick bounce and get up, right? He's not going to do a slow drop squat. When you go too low, you lose all the power, you lose all the force. And then specifically for uh, racking the bar in regard to the cleans, we want, we want those kids to force their elbows up to get that flexibility going. Again, we have a couple drills at the end of this video that will show how to get those wrists and those forearms nice and loose. So I'm um, regarding the actual progression exercises. So the first two, I went to a clinic at Sac State and a uh, presenter named Gary Schofield was presenting on these exercises. And it's just really basic, but it made a lot of sense to me because I didn't go slow and teach my guys how to actually do jumping exercises. So it's really simple. I'm going to start in the jumping position. I'm going to get a ready Q, and then I'm going to extend up. Sorry about the lag here. Let me try to go back here. So the Q for me as a coach is ready, extend, and the athletes are going to triple extend without leaving the platform. So ready, and then they're extending up. Ready, then they're extending up. Uh, a lateral version here, you can see that I want to end with full extension of the ankle, knee, and hip. That, that's, that's the real goal of doing this, right? We want to generate as much power as possible by pushing as much force into the ground as we can. Now, this drill, we're starting a little slower, so we're not leaving the platform. With the hands, again, I'm a little funky with them forward like that. As long as they're starting back, like you'll see right here, as long as the hands are starting back and then exploding up when the hips come through, that's kind of what we're looking for. So again, just working on that hip, knee, ankle extension. So the second progression is what I call triple extension. Now it's the same drill with me actually leaving the platform. So now I'm actually trying to jump off the ground. So hopefully this one's been acting kind of funny, but let me see if it runs here. The same cues for me as the coach. Okay, ready, extend, and I'm jumping up. Again, hands back, fire, fire them up, and you'll see from the lateral position, it's the same drill, except now I'm putting enough force in the ground where I actually uh, leave the ground, okay? When you're doing this drill, you don't want to see the kids moving forward and backward that much. You want them practicing jumping straight up. That's where the force is going. The force is going down for me to go up. Let's see if I can get this going again here. And again, I could have 50 kids outside. I say, ready, blow the whistle. They're all in the ready position. On the whistle, they're all extending and jumping. And it goes actually really, really quick. So these are, these are two drills that I found really beneficial for just teaching my kids how to jump more effectively. 
Uh, there's a lot of weird things they'll do. Sometimes they'll land on their toes. Sometimes they'll, uh, you know, keep their arms forward when they should be back or vice versa. Sometimes they won't extend their hips. So um, those are a few errors that we can correct long before we ever start moving weight in the and long before we ever start moving weight in the weight room. So um, I'm actually I actually should have moved split squat jumps down. They are actually a little more ballistic, so we're going to keep them at the end of our progression drills. Let's see here. There we go. So the next drill we do is just a real basic plyometric exercise. Um, just, you know, line hops. You can do this again with big groups. Most, almost all the drills, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you on here are drills you can do with big groups because in a PE setting, I always got 30, 40, 50 kids that have to get moving. So pretty simple. You're going to find a line and you're going to make sure your heels stay off the ground and move over and back as fast as you can, right? So we're just teaching the kids how to move now a little bit more forward, a little more dynamically keeping the heels off the ground. I actually do kind of a crappy job. I, I kind of move too far back. You should stay a little closer to the ground when you're doing this, but um, I'm sorry, a little closer to the line. The big cue for this is one, keep your heels off the ground. Two, move quick, right? We want your feet to quickly move back and forth. We don't want slow movements, right? Quickly move back and forth. You can do this drill a lot of different ways. You could um, have the kids facing forward. You can do it backwards. You can have the, the kids laterally facing, so they have to jump laterally. Um, in this video, I'm just showing you how to, how to do the basic drill, which is over and back. And again, if we think about sprinting, right? Well, the, the best sprinters have, get their feet off the ground faster, right? So actually, line hops is transferring over faster feet, faster sprint, faster sprint, faster football players, or faster athletes. So this simple drill actually correlates to athletic movements. So then our next progression would be single leg line hop. So now we're, now we're focusing on one leg at a time. Again, I would maybe slowly incorporate this. This is now a little more dynamic than, than two legs, but if you're trying to get that unilateral movement going. This obviously would be a little, a little more of a stressor. Um, balance, again, I'm not doing a great job. Hopefully the kids can stay a little straighter, but the idea is getting them to learn how to move quickly on one foot, right? Because again, when you are sprinting, you are balancing on that one foot for that period of time. Again, you can do this anywhere where you have a line. You can do it in big groups. Just get kids moving. And, and, I, and I don't want to sit here and say, oh, these are like the plyometric exercises you have to do to get good at jumping. There's dozens, right? I'm just going off the ones that I found effective, found easy to teach, easy to coach. I mean, you can do uh, depth jumps. You can do box jumps. You can do dumbbell squat jumps. I mean, you can do a ton of plyometric, you can do bounds. These are just ones that I feel, you know, are pretty easy to get a class moving with. So now we can end with um, split squat jumps. Uh, I will preface this, before you get kids doing split squat jumps, you want to get them in the lunge position. So some of our lower body progression exercises that you can see in a different video, I would recommend getting them used to the lunge position before you get them jumping from the lunge position. But again, this is a, a pretty ballistic, athletic movement so you're just uh, let me try this one more time so sinking and jumping and then alternating in the midair um, again a lot of stress on the lower body again we're, we're putting force into the ground trying to control our body in the midair uh, moving the hands forward and back alternating the feet so again just something that gets kids moving and, and preparing the body to act in an explosive jumping ballistic movement but again, there's a lot of different ways you can go here. So now these last two are specifically just for loosening up the wrists and forearms. I'm sure every strength coach has seen a lot of this when kids start to clean, right? The goal is to get the bar into the fingertips up on the shoulders, right? That, that's where we're going to be able to lift the most weight because our wrist can't hold nearly as much weight as our, as our shoulders can. We're getting out of that front squat position to finish a clean. So um, just one really simple wrist stretch that you can do independently, like without a partner. Um, again, it's not super amazing. You can do this anywhere where there's a ledge, but you're just leaning back where the wrists are, are leaning forward, and it's going to really loosen up all those forearm muscles. Um, there's, there could be a little bounce to it if you want. Um, you could do this independently standing, but I really like leaning back. You get a little more force on those forearms and those wrists. Again, sometimes kids just have, A, just really tight wrists. They just don't ever 
extend them that much or they have really tight form. This is what I really see mostly. Kids do a lot of strength exercises and get really tight forearms. you got to have loose forearms to be able to clean properly. So this is going to really loosen those bad boys up. The second one called Winner's Rack, I don't have a video of. Uh, I got this from a De La Salle football video. It's essentially a kid doing a front squat and their partner is holding their fingers as they go up and down to just really force those elbows uh, up, which is going to uh, get those fingertips back on the shoulders. So that's more of a partner exercise. You can have them switch. Uh, again, it's just down and up, forcing the fingers back and the elbows up. So that's just a couple of easy things you can do um, to get the wrist and, and the uh, forearms loose. Again, I, I've, I've said this a lot in a few of these videos, but if you just have kids go in and start cleaning, if they have bad form, the form's not going to get better just because they're cleaning a lot, just because they have some weight on, right? It might get, you might get small improvements, but by utilizing these drills, I call them progression drills, you can call them warm-up drills, if you mix these into your program, they're going to actually develop the positions that are going to make them much, much better cleaners. The form will get better, and their, their maximal ability to lift a lot of weight is going to greatly improve. So regarding programming, again, I do this as a warm-up, probably 5-10 minutes before we, after we stretch, before we go in the weight room and go over the program. Uh, it's quick. It's fun. It's not uh, very difficult. I mean, honestly, okay, give me, uh, everybody, give me some space. Double extension. Ready position. Ready. Hit. Ready. Hit. Okay, triple extension. You're just going to jump afterwards. Ready. Hit. They're all doing it at once. Okay, line hops. Find a line. Uh, 20 seconds of line hops. Keep your heels off the ground. Ready. Set. Go. And they're jumping back and forth. So it looks like a lot maybe if you're not used to doing these, but in reality, these go really, really fast. But they need to be focused on. Uh, again, the three videos um, I'm going to put out on the channel are not the lifting videos. They're the progression videos because once we've established loose hips, once we've established enough shoulder and pec muscle to do an active push-up, once we have uh, established proper jumping form and loose wrist to properly clean, now we're going to have kids, A, with really good form going forward, B, they're going to have a lot more growth happening in regards to their strength. They've primed their muscles to do more, uh, more load in the weight room. I, I would compare it to like building a house, right? If you built a house on a weak foundation, you can't put a lot of concrete on that foundation. You're going to have a weak house. If you really load up that foundation of, of, of some solid concrete and block, well, now you can really put a lot of weight on that foundation. You're going to have a really nice building. So, um, Hopefully this makes sense. Sorry about the videos bugging out a little bit. Uh, again, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you're learn some, learning something. Thanks.